soldering components onto the 11 HEN and 88 HPS boards is going to be a lot of work. Fun, but time consuming. So I am making a design change that hopefully will prevent a board spin after I build them all. I split the HEN board into two, an analog board and a digital board. Analog board is most challenging to solder and unlikely to change. I call this new board ECA for 8-channel analog. The new digital board I'm calling the TPS for Teensy Processing System. The TPS likely could change, for example, maybe different peripherals, but will be relatively easy to solder, and that is the advantage of the split. Also, as I shared in a previous video, I may swap for a Raspberry Pi in the future. Also, uh, there is a connection between two boards, and I can make TPS reports now. This video is about getting the TPS working. The next video will be on the ECA. Here are the TPS board features, the TNC microprocessor. Um, I went from the HEN approach with an external, it's a TNC kit Ethernet card to an integrated Ethernet. Then there is the header to the ECA. And finally, I just couldn't resist adding an LCD because you can never have enough televisions. First step to bringing up the board is getting the Ethernet working. So I soldered it first, along with the Teensy. After connecting to my computer, I tried to ping the TPS and that worked. Then I tested the new Ethernet design by sending a repeating sawtooth wave to my computer. At first it didn't work. Then I realized the TPS was waiting for an ADC ready signal since there is no ADC connected yet. I wrote some code to loop around that check and then it worked. Hooray. Next, the LCD. I'm using a disconnectable header because I purchased two different backlit versions and I want to try them out. And the LCD works. That was easy. I wrote a small program on the Teensy to simulate the full path without the ECA so I can test the rest of the TPS board. And it seems to be working, except sometimes I get really long delays. And I had this feeling that maybe the LCD write is taking a long time. So I wrote some code quickly to, to time it. And sure enough, that output is in units of microseconds. So a single character write to the LCD is taking over 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds is an eternity. The universe formed in less time than that. So that means each character I write to the LCD writes out, wipes out 80 samples of the hammer position, which it's just not gonna work. I decided to take a look at the SparkFun LCD driver code on GitHub to see if I could find any hints as to the issue. Interesting, look at this an artificial 10 millisecond delay, which actually is good news because this seems fixable. I'm guessing the LCD needs time between writes, but I can put that 10 milliseconds someplace else instead of it just stopping my processor cold. I cloned the code from GitHub and modified to remove the delay, and I wrote code on the Teensy to record the maximum delay around the LCD writes. Now it takes less than 200 microseconds which is better, but it's still too long because I only have 125 microseconds at the 8 kilosample per second data rate. I'm using I squared C. I determined that I can increase the I squared C frequency. Now we are sub 125 microseconds. But huh, this is for one character while the display is 2 by 16 or 32 characters. So I wrote driver code that writes one character in the processing interval, then waits 10 milliseconds to write the next. This, I determined, is fast enough to be OK visually. Here is an oscilloscope plot of the running system. At the top is data ready, which goes low every 125 microseconds. The chip select is when the data is transferred from the A to D converter to the Teensy. My algorithms so far only take 1.6 microseconds, although that will get longer. Then the LCD usually is no more than 50, 65 microseconds. As I zoom out here, you might have noticed that occasionally the LCD takes longer to write, and so my algorithm has to handle those rare missed samples, which it does just fine. So the TPS report is done next to the 8-channel analog board.